In this episode, once again, we speak to the amazing Peter Schroeder. Peter is an accomplished DJ, entrepreneur, and technology pioneer. With over 20 platinum records, 40 gold records, and a triple nomination for prestigious Danish DJ awards, Peter is one of the Denmark's top DJs, entertaining audiences up to 180,000. He was featured a radio host by the age of 12 and appeared on talk shows and TV stations across Denmark. In addition to music career, Peter has over 20 years of experience creating cutting edge technologies for companies such as Facebook, Samsung and Airbnb. He's a true innovator who works closely with businesses to address mission critical telecommunications, enabling them to quickly implement, manage and expand for success. Today, we were speaking to Peter about how to bootstrap yourself to a multi-million dollar business. Let's find out. And remember, if you want to upgrade your money mindset, then click on the link www.millionairefoundations.com and watch my free training. Welcome, welcome. This is Girl Khan, your money mindset expert. And once again, we have the amazing Peter Schroeder. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be back. Peter, once again, everyone's heard your intro, but please, in your own words, tell everybody what it is that you do. Well, I'm uh, the founder, CEO of, of uh, Telcio, a phone service provider based in Los Angeles, providing phone service to the world, really. Fantastic. So, Peter, <laughs> we we had this un- well, very fascinating conversation on Friday Feature. And this led them to, led us to today's discussion, which is on um, how to bootstrap yourself to mm-hmm. a multi-million dollar business. Now, you shared with us in Friday Feature that you literally had just fourteen thousand in, in your, you know, that you, you know, you cashed out for me four hundred one k. So literally, just you took out your pension and you said, okay, yeah. I'm going to invest into my 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 future <laughs> business. And how you took your fourteen that fourteen thousand to now, which is a multi-million dollar company. You know, mm-hmm. um, so. Talk us through, how do you do that? Well, I mean, uh, it's not just something you do overnight, obviously. You've been doing this Wait, for 10 nobody's... years. Uh... <laughs> okay. of course not. <laughs> it's a long road. So we, we took the long road. And, and it's actually interesting because um, when we started off this thing, uh, we thought that the way you grow uh, a business, especially a tech business, and you know, we're based in Los Angeles, but mm. you're hearing everything from Silicon Valley, so you go out and find a VC, and then you get a billion dollars, mm. and then you... Um, that doesn't really work that way. And you only hear about those one or two that actually gets that crazy amount and, and mm. on an idea. Um, so while we tried obviously raising money in the beginning and we thought we had to do that, um, you know, we also still had to grow the product and the business and actually start yeah. getting revenue. So we started out really, uh, you know, basically just like created a product, uh, a, a basic uh, phone service with very, very limited features and targeting really, really small businesses like startups and stuff, um, and 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 just put it online. So so we didn't spend any money on actually developing the product. It was all our own uh, uh, skills uh, uh, and 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 you know from from past uh, uh, things we've done, but. Uh, Build build a, a very basic product and then started just writing about it online in different places and and, and posting. Hey, we have this new product. Right, go try it out. Mm-hmm. Set a really low low price so that everyone can afford it. So we get at least some kind of traction in terms of getting some users in and getting some people to use it. So you understand what is it uh, that's wrong with it and mm-hmm. what do you need to make better. Um, so that was really the first two years of of of, of the company it was really just about. Uh, try and get some some users and, and, and get some a few customers in and, and see if you can get them to give some feedback and 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 and, and so on. And what happened then slowly and 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 uh, over over a course of, of a few years uh, was that every time we got a new customer, they had a suggestion for a feature or something like that. Mm. We would build it, and that would attract a bigger customer. Uh, and you know, eventually these customers went from being one or two employees. Uh, startups to companies like Netflix, Facebook, Samsung, uh, Google, and what have you, Airbnb, and, and 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 a bunch of other big businesses that we have some as customers today. And that's really just because we've been slowly massaging this product into mm. something that works for for bigger and bigger businesses. Um, every single single dollar that we uh, uh, earned on this, you know, we try to you know pay ourselves a very 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 low uh, salary just so we can pay rent and 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 you know buy some. 
uh, some some pasta, uh, <laughs> really, uh, and 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 not spending anything, but reinvesting everything, and and eventually, you know, we could hire our first employees. So when I say we, uh, I founded uh, the company with my wife, uh, or uh, back then we had just met each other, but. Um, you know, her taking care of the business side and, and me taking care of, of product uh, branding, vision, te- technology, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and, and, and that was obviously rough in the beginning because you sit there and, and you're running a company, you are, tr- you're, you're, uh, you know, creating uh, a product, you're working and putting a lot of hours into that. And at the same time, you're also answering the phone uh, and doing tech support on first line or someone calling in, you know, to reset a password and all these things. But you got to be, you know, willing to, to, to do that. Uh, and then slowly, you know, revenue started picking up. I think the first month we did two hundred dollars, all right. And then uh, the f- after a year, I think it was five thousand dollars a month. But then, you know, uh, because we were just putting everything back into it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, we could hire more people. We could start actually uh, spending more time on on things that made a difference in terms of growing the business. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. So that's the first couple of years, obviously. Um, but then how do you get the customers, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I'm thinking about this at the moment. So, I mean, one of when I was first starting out in the online space, and I think I came on the space just, I think, just around the time that Russell Bronson came on, came out with ClickFunnels. And mm-hmm. I saw his journey and what he did. And I was always inspired by it. You know, I, I, I think I was probably one of the early adopters of, of ClickFunnels and you know, just played around with it just for the sake of it. I didn't know what to the hell to do. And I've stayed with them ever since. So I'm still locked into the old price. Um, cool. But it's, it's. Um, I loved uh, the fact that they never did VC and then they, you know, they, and they didn't, they, and they made, they're the ones who came up with, you know, spend $1 to make $2, that kind of mm-hmm. a role model, um, model. And I think that kind of marketing just really ch- shifted whole social yeah. media marketing and how the you know the, the the marketing is done and how money is raised and how you, you can invest in your businesses and even now when i had this I remember having this conversation with um i was talking to a business consultant and you know the question was asked so you know what do you want to do and how do you want to raise funds and i said that we've got the debts we have at the moment is what we've got i don't want to have any more debts in the head um, a couple hundred thousand is, is more than sufficient considering you've got multiple seven figure business that's not much debt at all no, but no. i i'm not really keen on having um additional debt my my thoughts are let's bring profit in let's let's churn out profit and reinvest that into the company without mm-hmm. rather than me taking that as dividend let's reinvest that in the company and use that to grow the company uh yeah. I, because my my goal is not you know front end of profit is, is towards when i exit so i have an exit strategy in mind that i want, want to get take a, a large lump sum from so i'd rather sacrifice the, the front end for that right but the point is i don't want it to be in debt and it's a very different mindset to the conventional yeah. business because if you, when they think of raising money, they think, "Oh, let's go and get debt." Whereas I'm thinking, "Let's more, let's have more sales. Let's do yeah. some sales and That's really right. push for the revenue rather than actually, you know, going into more debt." Yeah, and and and, and that's the thing. Like we, we we've done exactly the same um, over the years, and and and. Uh, What's what's interesting is uh, obviously every industry is very different. Uh, for us, being a tech company and especially mm. in telecom, uh, you know, we are all online. Um, the way we get customers is well, we need to be available where uh, either you buy ads, you know, or, or or stuff like that, or or you are available when people search for it. For something like us, we our our service is a B two B service. Mm. It's really hard to sell someone a phone system. Uh, yeah. It's like selling someone a house. Uh, if 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 they are not looking for one they're not going to buy one it's it's yeah. it's like calling someone and say hey do you want to buy a house uh no uh but but you got to be available and you got to be there when someone is looking and to to mm. change whatever they have or upgrade or whatever whatever which means seo or uh, paid uh, search ads now for us the paid search ads are five or six hundred dollars per click mm. that the math does add up because uh, the retention rate and and, and the, uh, you know uh, MRR for 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 these different uh, times of uh, businesses. So the ROI is there. You know, the, the ROI must be the, there. The ROI is, but the problem is when you don't have when you have fourteen thousand dollars, you can't go out and spend yeah. the billion dollars that AT and T or Ring Central or, or uh, mm. these companies do, right? So so you got to figure out what can you do then. Mm. And and for us, it was well, you can get really good at SEO. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's something you can. It's a skill you can actually, you know, learn. Mm-hmm. So we went in and actually over. And it's, it this takes a long time. The SEO is not something. SEO you do does take a long time. Right? It's a it's yeah. a long game. Yeah, yeah. organic is. organic in any form is a long game. Whether you're posting on social exactly. media and so organic is the long. It's but it's it's a long game, but it's a sustainability. Whereas 
you know, paid advertising can get you the short burst of, of revenue, but it doesn't, it's, it's not sustainable. Um, right, and, and but but that's the thing. Like that that works when you have investors that can yeah. say, okay, we put in this much uh, yeah. in one end, and then this comes out the other. We didn't have that luxury, so we went out and became good at SEO. So if you search for phone menu or call queue, we're number one on Google, and mm -hmm. our competitors pay thousands to to you know to match that, and we get mm -hmm. it for, well quote unquote free. It's not mm -hmm. free because we put in a lot of labor, but uh, over the years uh, that is paying off, and that's how we have been able to grow a business, uh, mm -hmm. and and you know. That whole game is changing as well. I'm, right now, I'm standing here in a, in a new studio. We just spent like I think a million dollars on mm -hmm. uh, for for TV because we need to start creating video content because that's, that's where SEO is going now. We need to mm -hmm. adapt. But but you know when you can't do what the other ones are doing, you got to figure out how can I beat them uh, in another way. Then yeah, and, and you know that's different for, for everyone, obviously. And I think that's where the entrepreneurial mindset comes in. Okay, how can we do things differently? What can we do? Mm -hmm. What can we focus on? you know you, you if ever and i and i i learned this quite early on if everybody's going to, if everyone's going left i'm gonna go right i'm not even yeah. gonna think i'm just gonna say you're going that way everyone's going that way okay i'm gonna go that way why because yeah and then the other going ones are way. gonna follow you by the way yeah yeah <laughs> because it, it, i always think do do whatever yeah. the opposite of what the herd is doing and yeah. and therefore that you're always ahead of the herd because people always want to follow someone to want to be the leader to be you know, to have a different direction and i think mm -hmm. that's every in every industry there are some commonalities. We can just learn about marketing and just imply, you know, implement those. And that is building the like and trust factor. That's yeah. the biggest thing that, and that is. And, and, and being different, being standing out. I think you know one of the things that I, I found quite interesting, it wasn't intentional, um, but I, I'm finding in, because I'm in the steel manufacturing industry now, um, mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm like the, 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 I'm also a brown girl. Like everyone around me is usually, you know, Caucasian or white or something. I haven't seen much anything else right. so far. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, and I'm like, I'm a, I'm a woman and I'm brown woman on top. Right. And I'm a Muslim brown woman on top. Can you imagine I'm a Muslim brown woman on top? Right. Oh, that's great. Uh, and so it's yeah. intentional, but when we yeah. have meetings, I'm sure they will quite, they're, they're not going to forget me easily because I'm, I'm the odd, I'm the odd nice. one out. Right. Yeah, that's all of a sudden becomes your superpower, right? <laughs> exactly. So I mean, I, around, yeah. yeah, because they, they, then they, I'm, I'm memorable, and I'm someone. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so she's different, and okay, she's interesting. What is it? I mean, whatever reason, it just I stick in, in in the mind, and then when we come back for repeat business, it's there because okay, fine. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, obviously, you have to provide high quality product. That goes yeah. without saying. But yeah. people have to remember who you are. They're not mm -hmm. just sticking people's minds. Sometimes something about you allows you to do that. I mean, my kid, just being me, just being a brand in the UK um, has helped me. However, whatever industry, and you, you can have a unique aspect to yourself and that will create your USB that makes you, that differentiates between you and everybody else. But if you act and behave like everyone else, mm -hmm. then what's the dif differentiating factor? Nothing, right? You know what? I, 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 I spent a lot of time teaching our, and, and I'm literally stuffing it down the throat, uh, our, our supporters and, and, and sales teams, um, how to talk on the phone with customers. They come from 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 other positions and similar mm -hmm. positions, you know, and they are, it takes a long time to get this out of, by the way, yeah. the way and the wording you use when you speak uh, as a supporter to a customer, mm -hmm. you know, the cautiousness and, and, and I'm telling you, leave that and talk to them like is your best friend. So, yeah. so someone calls in and you say, uh, hey, 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 John, how are you, man? Okay, so uh, yeah, let me see how I can I can help you that. Can you give me your, your, your account number or something like that? You know, speak to the customer uh, as if it's your best friend. Uh, yeah. And they will respect you 10 times more and then will rem remember you. If mm. you go read our uh, reviews online for our customers, all of them mention our support. Uh, mm. And that's because they get personal support and they all of a sudden, because you, you take away this a uh, hat that you put uh, put on as a, as a supporter and supporters sound this way they talk you know cautious if you put leave that um and 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 you 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 just like become friendly when the the customer will not only respect you more they will believe that you know like you they have already reached the, the top tier supporter because mm. this guy is, is is so much in control and and knows everything because he's just like he's relaxed and he's he's very confident it's it's a whole different game. Um, yeah. I learned that really really early on, and and it's, yeah, it it works. I think half the battle is actually knowing how to speak to your audience. Um, mm. That's I mean that's something. I mean I, my background is I'm a lawyer, so that's I mean I and I'm a barrister in the UK. So one of the things that I'm very grateful for that 
we were sort of drummed into us, I think during our uh, bar vacation proposals, I have no idea what it's called now, but at that time it was bar vacation proposals, is, is being able to communicate effectively in, you know, to both to lay, you know, which would be layman, your, your clients. And then also mm-hmm. you have solicitors here, solicitors, and then also your judges and so forth. And being able to converse in the language that's appropriate for right. the different, you know, di- different audiences. So you basically target your audience and speaking to them. And I, mm-hmm. that is the one skill set that I've used across my careers everywhere, even now. Yeah. So when I'm speaking to, for example, when I'm speaking to a welder or I'm speaking to a bookkeeper or a management accountant or an MD or whatever else, the language, the way I speak and the mannerism changes. And also, you know, I also become softer. So as I've climbed the ladder, instead of becoming stricter, I've become softer because I think I, I, <laughs> I'm a bit overpowering at times. <laughs> so, so I've become softer because I had to, otherwise, yes you know you are in a position of authority but if you don't if you don't come from the same angle and speak to them from the language that they can hear Mm -hmm. you you'll be talking down to them and that's not going to be heard by anyone you have to come to their level and speak in a language so that we're non-threatening for starters there's a book actually called non-violent um communication i love that book and that helped me to really really understand how to speak in a way that was non-violent it doesn't matter i mean it doesn't mean that's me that you're in, a, you're in a fight but it just means that you're speaking in a non-threatening way to right. your you know your your team members and your other you know your or subordinates but obviously team members and also you know people around you and this is a skill that i think all you know we as an entrepreneurs need to have because you need to be able to talk to them but that also skill is as you said it's your sport that sport yeah. or the, the sport staff needs to be able to talk in a in a friendly way to understand yeah. the problems because once yeah. once people feel that they've understood that's half the game yeah exactly exactly spot on uh and 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 and, and it's 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 fascinating how hard that is to learn uh to yes do, because it's, it's, a skill. Saying, it's a it skill it's a skill hey you just talk to your friend right yeah that's really difficult uh especially if you've uh, been in a in a different position you know and, and yeah. you, you're used to just putting that hat on when you go to work uh yeah. that's that's that can be really different and and, and i and i even try to you know make my team talk to me that way and hey like tell me when i'm an idiot or tell me when i'm uh, uh when i'm wrong and yeah. that's even harder you know like, having like the guts to 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 go against your boss and say yeah. hey you're absolutely wrong about this and and uh, i think what you, you said right there that was like you you, you sounded really condescending or, or something like that you know um luckily i i now have a, a few employees it's not the whole team but that that has that uh, ability and that drops off uh, for the rest. But that's difficult. But if you can get there with your <laughs> with your team, that's uh, that's gold. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So coming back to this idea of you know how to go from fourteen thousand, literally bootstrap you all the way to multi multi million dollar business, and having you know clients like Netflix and um, you know Airbnb on, on your on mm-hmm. your books. Now, you know. We've talked about lead generation and doing that through um, organic, through you know SEO, and because in this day and age everything's available. Right. You know what else? So apart from that, what else should someone be focusing on? So if they're running a startup, and people have these ideas that you know, like I said, we've we've, which we've got rid of already that they're going to get um, a VC, and if they don't get a VC, then the idea's gone down the drain. No, it's not. Um, no. You can still build on the idea. You just have to put um, creative hat on and to find creative ways to generate leads and generate interest and and generate revenue. The most important thing is generate sales. That yeah. has to be your target and work out how you can get sales without spending enormous amount of money on advertising. Yeah, and that's that's really just different from everyone, And but, but it's, it's about being creative. That's, mm. that's you, you just gotta really think differently. But, you know, um, I think I think that whole, uh, whole thing about, uh, you know, be, be, you know, being being willing to 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 take that journey because it's it's uh, you know obviously it's it sounds like uh, yeah that might not be as easy as just getting some money from a VC uh, but just be happy when you do make it because I mean we we didn't take any money so we own the company now mm. uh, instead of five percent uh, and and at some point you know early on we were actually offered an investment I think it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for fifty percent of the company mm. and. Am I glad today that I didn't take that? Uh, you know, uh, there was a been a whole different game. So I think it's important. Um, you don't have to raise money. Uh, you can like there are always ways you can uh, make it. it. Might be a lot harder, uh, but if you're willing to do it, the upside is there as well. I believe so too. Come talk to me about how you find team members. Now, in my experience, 
the hardest thing you do is not generating mm -hmm. leads. That's actually the easy part. I think if you can get your head around uh, marketing, it, it's it's instant and repeat. The hardest thing is creating the right team yeah. and, and selecting or finding the right sort of talent. How do you go about doing that, especially when you're on bootstrap? That's rough. Uh, I think mm. the first uh, couple we found just uh, on some, some just like basically sent them an email and said, hey, uh, you, do you want to come work for us? Uh, something like that. Uh, but it's really, really difficult. It's... Uh, it's a struggle, and I hate doing it. Uh, it's 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 uh, you know it's it's so time consuming, and you feel like you're you're walking in sand because, uh, you know, you also have to be willing to to be tough and fire people fast uh, when you don't find the right ones because the way people uh, act and in, in doing an interview uh, is often very different from from when they actually start working. We, we we've seen some stuff. Um, I think all entrepreneurs probably have um, uh, gone through that. But but yeah, it's 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 difficult. We uh, tried recruiters. That was just expensive and no good. Uh, we actually ended up having to ask for our money back uh, completely because and and they couldn't even pay us back because that's of such a volatile industry. Apparently, uh, we tried to doing that. That's that was no good. I mean, I think today we we really just end up trying to uh, uh, hit up our network and 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 see who we who we can find. And then we try to limit our uh, staff. I mean, if you look at our staff count compared to our competitors and then uh, compare it with uh, the number of customers and, and users we have, we are quite a bit smaller than, than everyone else. And that's because we don't want to just hire a bunch of people just to hire them. We want to find the right ones. One thing is I hate managing. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, so, so I mean, it, 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 is, it is really difficult to, uh, to find people and, 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 and you have to, to uh, spend a lot of time doing it. Uh, it's it's worth it though when you do find those those superstars. Uh, that's what you need to grow a company. You can't do it by yourself. No 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 one has ever been able to do any like build a real business by themselves. If you think you can, then you're del delusional and you should probably just stop. Um, so put in that effort, and and uh, you know it, 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 of course it varies based on industry and what you're doing where you uh, go to find these employees. We uh, have had good success with with uh, LinkedIn and and really just hitting people up uh, and saying, uh, hey, so uh, see so you do this and this and can can I at least you know try and tell you about what we do here, and and, and try and set up a a, a a call and you know don't be uh, again uh, think that's beneath you. Uh, this is really what what your business depends on. So you need to put that uh, that work in and 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 try and and, and see if you can. You can find those superstars, and when you do, I mean, one of our best uh, people on our team, he's only 25, and uh, you know, uh, he is, you know, the perfect employee in so many different ways. Uh, so, so imagine that that you find those people that can really take stuff off your plate, and and you know, so you can focus on what you're good at, uh, and, and and just keep that in in the back of your head while you're grinding through it. Uh, you know, it's worth it. Wonderful, wonderful. So now let's wrap this up. Uh, what would be your parting comments to someone who's also thinking of, of uh, or is currently doing a startup and they're all uh, also bootstrapping themselves all the way to the world, their aspirations to get hit seven figures. So what would your advice be to someone like that? Um, I, would, I would always say that uh, if you're thinking that it's not worth it, then you should quit because... Um, Again, we, we we've talked about these, uh, you know, like like people that make make excuses and stuff like that. Uh, for me, I've never thought about bootstrapping. I've never thought about that what it is that I was actually doing. Like when while being in it, uh, I'm just doing it because I can't not do it. I have to constantly, you know, grow this thing. I'm, I have to work on. It. I have to put everything I have into it to to see this thing grow. Uh, so, so I think it comes really natural, and and I think if you uh, if you're thinking too much about whether or not this is uh, worth doing, then it's probably not worth doing. Uh, that's that's at least my 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 take on it. And then I think everything kind of kind of comes uh, automatically. Eventually, you know, you will get customers, and maybe you know, maybe you don't become a billion dollar business, but you'll probably get customers, and and you'll probably get some some revenue and you know to, to you know, sustain a living. And, and maybe it stops being interesting and then if you do something else, who knows? Wonderful. So tell us, Peter, how can we connect, how can we connect with you? Where can you find you on the internet? Um, PeterSchroeder.com. Uh, there's literally links to everywhere I'm online and my email address. Uh, so hit me up.
Wonderful. So if you are listening to us on the podcast, then the links that Peter just mentioned would be in the show notes. And if you're watching us on YouTube, then down below in the description section, we'll have the links for him as well. Check him out and see how he can help support you in your business. Well, thank you so much for being a guest today, Peter. It's been a fascinating conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening to me and Peter today on Money Talkies. I will be back with another amazing guest finding out how you and I can build a better business. Until the next time, this is Girl Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.